This is episode number 26 of DevOps Paradox with Darren Pope and Victor Farsik. I am Darren. And I am Victor. Victor has the idea today. So what is the idea for today? It's not really the idea, but uh, I just came from Global Software Architecture Summit, so uh, we can talk about that, architecture, architects as a role, and uh, the, how do we see architecture uh, in modern enterprises or modern companies or companies, right? Can, can I have an opinion on that? Oh, absolutely. Please do. Uh, it's around and the architecture. Go ahead. I hope it's going to be against my opinion so we can fight. I, I don't know, because this one you may think the same on me. It's rare in today's world to see architects that know how to use a tool other than Visio or a Visio-like substance. Ah, now we agree again. That's Dang it. Nice. <laughs> okay. But that's true, yeah, but right? That's or it, that that seems to be a pattern at least. It may not be a hundred percent true or even ninety percent true, but it's no, largely true. Yeah, uh, nothing is true for everybody, of course. But uh, I notice the same thing is that you know even the companies that are moving towards or move towards iterative de- uh, software development processes, you know, kind of couple of weeks iterations and stuff like that. I think that architects very often still reject that idea. Kind of, I'm going to spend a month designing your solution and then I'm going to go away and you can iterate as much as you want with my solution, which I probably never tried myself. Right. They're they're still waterfall or even worse than waterfall. That's So, so, you know, my beef, and this is not so, if if you're listening to this, you're an architect, I'm not saying that everybody's like this, just a few cases that I've met my beef are two things. First, guessing that you can define something in advance that will be equally applicable today as next year. That, that is just silly to me. Second, the idea that you can, anybody can just come and say, do this, do that, and then go away. Kind of as if my job done. Right? I really respect architects I'm, I'm not sure whether that should be the name anymore but uh, of what i'm going to describe so maybe we look for a different name but i do respect people with maybe more knowledge than others who stick in a pro- with a project and uh, continue refining the architecture of your application that that i do respect but that would be a person who would for example code review my pull requests right and say oh Maybe you can do this better. Maybe you can do that better. Maybe this is not in line with our vision. Full respect for that. And zero respect for following the plan. No matter is what. It, is it basically this this type of architect that we're explaining is somebody that came up through the development ranks, was incapable of being a manager, but wouldn't or couldn't leave, so they made him an architect. Yes. Or maybe that's a person who wanted a raise in salary and the only way how a company will give you a raise if you change from developer to something else. And he had a silly hope in his head that that would mean that he's going to stay technical. And those hopes are crushed two years later. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to, if you've listened this far and you're not yelling at us yet, um, and you're, you're a quote unquote architect, um, please help out your people. <laughs> it's like this, your role is critical because you're laying down the plans and laying the foundation, creating the plans and laying down the foundation of what, not only developers, but support people and end users are going to have to deal with. So if you're, you, if you are basically, here's a design, throwing it over the fence and going over and starting another design, you are the problem. Now, the reason why you're the problem is that business came up with requirements and threw them over the fence to you. Boy, I feel a little salty today. <laughs> now, but, here's the reason why I can say all this. Because I have played the architect role in other companies. Me too, me too. But 
I don't know how to use Visio. I am the other person. I can't think of not coding. Now, did I do everything? No, but I did a lot of it. But it was smaller companies. It wasn't larger companies. So I had to. I, I really didn't have a choice. But I'm wired in such a way, it's like, okay, look, if I'm the architect, I sort of need to know everything. Even I don't, even if I do not know it deep, I need to know it. Because guess what? I might be called on to do support through rotation. So I got to know it. But, you know, to me, one from... I mean, from yesterday's event, but also from some other cases, what is interesting is a shift from focusing on applications towards focusing on a system, right? Hmm. Kind of, as our applications are becoming smaller and smaller, and this might be only my opinion, maybe everybody disagrees, but as applications are becoming smaller and smaller, and more and more things are going outside of applications, like our applications are not anymore in charge of service discovery. Uh, uh, authentication is outside. Uh, encryption of networking is also outside. So more and more things are going outside of the applications. And that means th that is, I, I believe, good because they're becoming smaller, more focused and can focus on business needs instead of things like how do I speak with other applications? You know, kind of, how do I encrypt the traffic? So it allows applications on one hand to focus more on, on business. And on the other hand, uh, that also means that architecture is moving somewhere else to a, to a higher level. Uh, kind of, oh, so how are we going to encrypt communication across everything, right? Or how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And, and I believe, I'm not saying that all the patterns now are irrelevant, but that that means that architecture of, an, of a single application among hundreds of others is becoming less and less important. Within that context, you're primarily talking Kubernetes, though, right? I mean, I... I, I mean, authentication the, is authentication. Yes, that's across the board. Yeah, but I mean... End-to-end -end encryption? Come on. I mean, that's not simple outside of Kubernetes. It's not, but... Uh, we are living in Kubernetes era, right? But yeah. even if it's not... Okay, let, let, let me put this with a counter question. It's not simple uh, outside of Kubernetes, no matter how you do it. How, many how, how often did you have trouble when a customer says, okay, and now I want certificates inside of Jenkins? Uh, what's a, the, a, your a but favorite? A butterfly just flapped his wings somewhere, and now there's a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that, that just makes me cry on the inside because exactly. that's painful. It's doable, but it's an extra layer of, okay, now we have to make sure the handshakes happen everywhere. And that's, it's, it's not difficult, but it's annoying. Exactly. And actually I would say that it is difficult. It's not difficult. Maybe when you look at one application, but when you look at, yeah. All of them. Oh, suddenly yes. it needs to speak with Nexus and Nexus needs to have a uh, handshake and TLS and God knows what. And then it needs to speak with this and that and all those things complicate. And then you suddenly have hundreds of different places where you need to do one silly thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because, and, because the company, as a poor decision, has decided to have their own root CA. Yeah, for example. <laughs> Just, yeah, that's bad so while i do admit that you're right initially when you say yeah it's much more complicated outside of kubernetes yes but that still does not make it uh less complicated if you if you do it an application level instead of some more global yeah. system-wide level yeah so in taking care of architects if someone is what we have sort of defined as a bad architect. They only know how to use Visio. <laughs> what is their true purpose? I mean, what or, or how can they, maybe they come to the self-realization, you know what, I'm really not helping. I'm helping a little, but I'm not helping to the point that I could. How do they, how do they make that transition to being better? I guess is the question I'm coming up to because they're maybe so ingrained 
and this is the way it's always been done here. Maybe. I mean, I, I don't have the answer, but I do know that this is now what, what we are tackling now is not really archi- architect's problem. This is a problem we see all across the board, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can name you now five different roles in a second that do the same thing. And the real problem is that we have technical roles filled with people that are not technical. And that's a real issue. And that applies to architecture, that applies to testing, that applies to uh, many, many other roles. Right? You're in technical organization, you have technical job, therefore you write code, period. I don't care who you are. Yes, you should. I mean, an, an architect to me, now the, the, because I've seen people application architects, network architects, right? Depends if, if you, if you're not just a generalized architect, if you're, let's say you're a network architect, you better be writing Terraform, right? Or, or an infra architect needs to be, be able to write Terraform. But that's the thing is that let's say network architects, right? I don't see the need for a role called network architect. We have network people doing network and they should know what they're doing. Right. If you need a person to tell them what they're doing, then we have a problem on a much bigger scale than that role. What I do think is necessary is so if you have all those different roles like network people, right? <laughs> uh, uh, Front end developers and so on and so forth. So the only advantage I see in ar- architects as a role is somebody who can be above all that, right? So, yeah, you know how to do your part. I don't need to tell you how to develop application. If I do, then you're in the wrong place. But maybe you're not aware of what happens between your application and other applications and how do we combine that with uh, virtualization and containerization and so on and so forth. So I can only see now maybe architect is not the name. I, I don't know. But so somebody who takes care of a bigger picture. Let's call it a system. Right. And this goes back to your earlier point. Systems thinking instead of application thinking. Yeah. Because I, I, I cannot expect, let's say, uh, front-end developer JavaScript that he will now learn networking and Kubernetes and firewalling and God knows what else, right? I cannot expect that. That's unrealistic. So, yes, if I can have a person who can put all those different pieces of, of a puzzle together... Great, amazing, thumbs up. But don't please don't tell me how to write my code. Because if you have to do that, I'm, unless I'm a junior, but then I have a senior developer who's going to help me and teach me and all those things. It's isn't it kind of almost ins- let's say now for the sake of argument that you're a, you're a senior developer or principal developer or whatever, right? How would you wouldn't you be insulted? If somebody comes and tells you, this is how you're going to write your code. Uh, probably not insulted, but I'd be really mad. Okay. <laughs> it's like, don't tell me what, don't tell me what I know. I, I, mm, yeah. And, and I'm not, that, that does not mean that. So maybe actually I express myself badly. I mean, kind no, of- you, you made yourself right. I'm just saying that if somebody was, to, if, if I'm a s- senior or principal developer, whatever that role is, and somebody says, hey, man, great, congratulations on that promotion. Uh, by the way, uh, you used to be able to figure out for yourself as a junior how you wanted to write your code. Now we're going to tell you line by line how you write your code. Yeah. And to make a distinction, there is a difference between tell and suggest or point to the improvements. That's that's a learning experience. So yes. code review my code. You can be junior, I can be senior. If you give me a good suggestion, I'm going to take it. That's great. So I, I, I'm going to change my statement from telling to ordering. Somebody's ordering you how to do it. Yes. It's like, why the heck am I here? If you're ordering me to do this, then it must be so well defined that you even you don't even need me. It should be able to be automated at that point. Low code, something, whatever the case may be. No code. Yeah. It's or like, yeah. You know, do it yourself. That's a polite way of saying it. Do it yourself. Yes. That's. So, yeah, it's not that. 
it needs to be some additional value. That person needs to, if I assume that you're an expert in X, that person needs to bring something outside of that X into the picture to provide value. Yes. So if you're listening to this, if you're an application architect, change your profession, become systems architect, learn everything you need to learn, learn how mainframe works, and then start suggesting things. Hmm. The, uh, so, so we've been hammering on the architect. What was some of the things you heard about architecture? That was so like, the, what, you know, what is a, a shift, a pattern of whatever that's happening? I, I really liked, we had a session on reactive architecture and I really liked it. It's basically, in a nutshell, it's about distributed systems and how everything mm -hmm. should be asynchronous, how synchronous calls are dead. Uh, a lot of fighting over that. Uh, I was in a, in, in a camp that was in favor of that. But in favor I, of what, I, async? Async, uh, yes. Okay, good. I thought we were really going to fight because if you're in favor of sync, we're going to like, come on. Now, uh, I will write it. I'll say it this way. Writing async is not simple. Once you've learned how to do it, it's easier, but it's not natural to think asynchronous. So that, that was the argument kind of against it, you know, oh, it's harder. But my argument was, yeah. okay, let's stop talking about whether it's harder or easier. I can claim it's e as, as easy or you can claim that it's harder. That's not really a discussion. The discussion is, can you meet today's needs in, with synchronous calls? And I argue that you cannot. I mean, unless you have a hobby site or something like that, right? If you're talking about large distributed systems, if you're talking about applications becoming smaller, if you're talking about them scaling up and scaling down and all the other things that we are talking about, then it's a must. It's not really uh, a well, question of what is easier. I mean, there are still systems that we have to interact with, namely databases that are synchronous, except for Mongo, which can be async. But yeah. if, I'm, if I'm interacting with Microsoft, Oracle, whatever, at some point, a request has to be synchronous. The, yes, but now the question is, you might be theoretically talking directly to Oracle DB, or you might be talking through some service pass, some queue mechanism, you know. Uh, at, at one point in a system, there is a synchronous call. The si yep. To me, that's the same discussion, and I heard a lot uh, when, when we speak about application should potentially be stateless, uh, and uh, and then the argument says, oh no, but you have a state somewhere. Of course you have a state. I'm not saying that there is no state. I'm saying that the design of your application should be stateless and state should be somewhere and we need to tackle it. The same thing with the synchronous and synchronous. Of course, some things are going to be synchronous, but that's implementation detail outside of your application, I believe. Kind of like your application should be able to fire this, receive acknowledgement. I'm not even talking about database, but in general. Hey, Darren, can you do this? And you tell me, yes. And then I don't go behind your back and watching whether you're doing it or not. I assume that you're going to do it. Because you're waiting for the answer. No, I, I, <laughs> I got acknowledgement. Yes, I will. So that was important. That, was, that, that yeah. is a kind of synchronous, right? But yeah. I'm not waiting until you finish whatever I ask you to do. You said you will. I got my acknowledgement. That's a synchronous part, actually. Yes. But from there on, I'm not waiting for you anymore. You might send me an email when you're done. Yep. Right? And then I might do some other things. Maybe some other things were dependent on me, but I'm waiting on your email. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to wait. My, my, a good example to me was kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of going back in time. Imagine if I called you on a landline and then you don't answer and I would, I would, I would wait. I kind of keep ringing and ringing and ringing until you answer. No, that's synchronous. We don't do that. I send you email. Yeah. But then that's, that's where people, and this is the other part of async is people. It's like, Oh yeah, I sent this email. I sent this Slack message, but they haven't answered me yet. Right. You're using a medium that is inherently async, but you're treating it as synchronous. 
Yes. And that's no. that's a mismatch too. What because. is missing is that acknowledgement, I think. I, I often respond to some messages on Slack or email saying, got it. Right. Right. So that you know that I got the message. I understood what's happening. So I, I think that, that acknowledgement is important in systems, in, in human communication, all those things. And then when I'm going to do it, that's a separate right. issue. It depends on the queue of my own tasks. Right. It's basically, I you return with a 200 stat in human life. I return with a 200 status code and here's the request. Here's your ticket number. It's like yeah. walking in. It's like walking into a bodega or some little shop and you've got somebody at the front door that gives you a ticket. Yes. Right. And then his job is done from a systems perspective, but somebody else is actually going to fulfill against that ticket number at some point. You just don't know if your wait's going to be a minute or if it's going to be 10 minutes. You just don't know based on what's going on. But you know that your order or whatever you need to do is being queued. That's important. You're, you're in queue. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's good. What what else? So was that was that a vendor sponsored session? Just out of curiosity? No, it, oh, it what? wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. Actually, uh, it was amazingly being the first time that that was organized. It was amazing because actually everybody who matters in this world of for ar- architecture wise was there, uh, without naming names, you can go and check it. Um, so it, it was really good. And I was surprised actually that, uh, uh I expected architects as, you know, names and stuff like that to be more focused on applications. And I was surprised, surprised how, how much we talked more about what's happening outside of applications. The, um, the, where was I going with that? The, the interesting part, okay. It was conferences. So this, you said this was the first time this conference happened. Yes. So based on our previous episode where we talked about conferences, did you see any other patterns? We're really all over the place today. Did you see any of the patterns? Do you see a lot of hallway conversations? Was it programmed too much? Was there enough breathing room? What did you think? So not not much uh, hallway, uh, but that's I think partly, and that I actually think it's a good thing. There was only one track. Oh, it's a single uh, track. Okay. Yes, and I know that people like five tracks. I don't. I like one track, maybe two. Saying, okay, you really actually thought through the sessions and those sessions are really good. And I'm going to actually stick and listen to it. I, I rarely listen to the sessions anymore because there's too, man, too many of those that I'm not really interested in or I know it and stuff like that. If you have a single track and you made it really, really good, kind of like not just whomever applied, yeah. it's a good thing. So, the, But the reason why a single track and maybe a two track is your best is because of how you work and how you live. You work on one thing at a time, quote unquote, one thing at a time, right? Going back to your book, you don't work on two books at a time. You work on one book at a time. If you have ideas for something else, it goes onto the queue. That's your second track, right? That's just, it's somewhere <laughs> to throw the buffer, right? <laughs> so that's the reason why I think that that's why I'd appeal to you, but I think done correctly. Yeah. A single track conference is great. But as a producer of a show like that, it's got to be tough because you've got to be smart about you're putting putting together puzzle pieces that did not ship in the same box. And you're trying. Yes. <laughs> that's hard. So it's, it is hard. It is hard. But that's I would, it is hard. That's why some things are better than others, because some people are better doing things and others than others. Right. And that's going back to the conversation about reactive architecture. Uh, asynchronous is hard. Okay, so swallow it. Everything we do is hard. And you know, and and here is a message to to you, dear listener. Next year it will be harder, and the year after that it will be even harder because we advance and we do more and more complex things. Remember, it's gonna get only harder from here on, not easier. Remember, Java eight dies in December twenty twenty. There you go. Right? I mean, that's, I mean, of course it won't die, but 
You think about it, though. That, that is a legitimate thing. End of support for Java 8 is December 2020. So where is your company going to go? The next LTS is Java 11. Welcome to modules. Right? It's Exactly. I, well, it's too hard. It's hard. It's like, well, I'm still working on Java 6. I'm sorry. Leave that company and get a better job. Learn something else. Learn Go. Learn, or or at least get to Java eight so you can start making the transition. Because it's happening. And that's not software. Just make let's make it clear. It's with everything. Kind of like it was so much easier to ride a horse than to build a car, and the building car today is harder than it was twenty years ago. Kind of, we improve, and improvement means it's harder. Harder as in you need to know more, not necessarily harder. If you know what you're doing, then it's not really harder. Correct. Like when you first sit down to write, you know, let's call it an Ansible playbook, you're going to be pulling your hair out. But after about the third or fourth one, you start to see patterns. Now, are you still producing great work? No. Are you producing good work? Maybe. But it's getting easier through repetition. It's like when I go to the gym, I pick something up, I put it down. I pick it up, I put it down. However, I didn't start at, you know, 135 pounds on a bench press. I had to start as a weakling and start just pressing just the bar at 45 pounds. I'm okay with that. Now, the inside 53-year-old me said, what are you doing? You did more than this when you were a kid. Yes, I was a kid then. I'm not a kid anymore. But I work my way up and keep going. Now, do I aspire to be a bodybuilder? No. But do I want to be the best that I can be? Yes. I got to I got to I got to do the best for me. I because I am me. I am not Victor. I am not, you know, it's Victor we each have our lift 2 pounds, let me tell you. <laughs> Is that how much a bottle of an adult beverage weighs? Is two pounds? Yeah, I don't know how much is a pound in kilos, but yeah, that's kilos. Uh, two kilo, uh, two two and a half kilos, I think. Oh, I can do up to five. You can do five kilos, okay? Jeez, um, and I, and and my math's probably off on the on the again. I am I am English imperial. I am not metric because that is the correct measurement standard. Metric is just a waste. Yeah, it's too complicated. You need to it's divide everything with 10. I mean, imagine that. Uh, boy, that that might have, if, if you're still listening, that might have made you mad too, that metric is, yeah, it's, was it, it's the US and one other country that are not metric. I mean, That's, there are others, I think. A few others, but. I mean, UK is not metric. Oh, that's true. Well, no. Th- yeah, they are. They don't. No, I uh, they have pints and miles. No, that's true. Stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. So architecture. Okay. Architects. Cause we went through a few things here. Architects. If the only tool you know how to use is Visio, please get out of the people's way and go get another job. Architect. Become a designer. Become a, Become designer. a designer. There is more, more drawing yeah. involved. More. Architecture. Reactive. If you've not looked at reactive and of course there's numerous people and you know, everybody has pretty much jumped on the reactive bandwagon. Uh, you need to learn it. You need to understand async. If you expect everything to be synchronous, expect your application that you're writing to fail. Once it hits scale, it will. And some, at some point somewhere in your app, it'll fail now. All right. So here's, and we're at the end. What if you still have a monolith? Does async make sense in a monolith? I mean, it makes more sense than sync anywhere, if you ask me. Uh, the question is more whether it's worth it to change your monolith you know, to async or anything else. That's that's right. Is, is there a business I mean, case to do it? I'm exaggerating. It's not that async makes sense everywhere. Just like so anything I say when I say this is better does not make sense everywhere, right? Uh, it should, though, right? But my recommendation for your monolith is let it rot. This is not the async question, kind of like if you if if you if, if you did not improve it, if you don't if you're not refactoring it for years, then 
let it continue rotting. It Concentrate on something new. It's it's the concept that we talked about before. Don't go take the Gang of Four book off your shelf and implement every pattern from Gang of Four in a single application. Don't do that. It's the same thing here. If you've got a monolith and it's running today and you don't have any real pain points in it, don't mess with it. It doesn't need to be re-architected. It's fine. Finally, you went to a new conference, single track, yeah, and it was done well because you felt like there was a story that that carried throughout the day. Exactly. What What do you think that one? St- what is the one storyline? Now, obviously, reactive was part of a, a stop along that storyline. What was the overall storyline? Because it was called what was the name of the conference again? Uh, Global Software Architecture Summit. Okay. But the stories and what might have kept my interest, I don't know about the others, is that actually there was uh, half of that, half of the sessions, and it's a single day, right? Half of the sessions were talks, but other half were panels and discussions. And I actually like discussions much more. I like I like sitting on a chair and then lifting my hand and saying, this is horrible. <laughs> Let's discuss that. <laughs> uh, and then, were we speaking speaking about tank conferences? Uh, on the last conference, yeah, in the last step. Yes, yeah. yes. That, that, that goes this in felt line. More, it, this was more, it sounds like there was a, quite a mi- mix or mashup of unconference and structured, structured conference as well, which is it hard to pull really off. It wasn't really unconference, so it was arranged who's going to sp- yeah. be in which panel and what are going to be initial questions. But... You know, the reason why I'm actually talking about reactive and rather interesting subjects is because actually two of the panelists really disagreed with one of the panelists and there was a kind of uh, argument going on. And and I liked yeah. it because then, then you hear pros and cons instead of, you know, Victor telling you, oh, use Kubernetes always, right? Uh, having somebody who disagrees with you uh, and those being clever people that have something interesting to say is it is it is an excellent thing and then probably at now, the end of the day those two people went off and got a pint together or whatever it is that you would do in barcelona yeah we had beers all together yeah. and all those things but that's the thing so this is a recommend if you're making a panel make sure that somebody disagrees with somebody else in a panel yeah so that's the reason why you and i can never be on the same panel because our our overlap at least in this space is too high I'm sure there's so, other things that we would disagree on, but not in this space. So we need to bring an architect into our discussion. <laughs> Who could we... P- oh, okay. That might if be you're an architect, one. drop us yeah. an email, come and let's fight. If Yeah, because if, if you are an architect and one that believes that your only role should be to create Visio diagrams and those basically to rule from on high, uh, we would like to talk with you because I, I'm sorry, I don't understand the mindset. Yeah, but you know, nobody will ad- say that, admit that. That's the problem. It's the same thing like when you have very unpopular president in a country, nobody admits that they voted for him or her, right? Or, uh, you know, nobody admits things that are obviously bad, even when they're doing it. It's like admitting to a murder. You don't do that. You've never been to the U.S. in politics, have you? Okay, um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, if if you are an architect and you want to talk about this, tell us where we're wrong, or tell tell us where we're completely wrong, or tell us where we're partially wrong, because we may be literally missing something, right? And that's okay. We don't we're we're willing to talk to anybody, and then uh, Victor will have an adult beverage with you afterwards. I won't. Uh, I don't drink. Uh, I'll have some club soda with you. That's what, that's what I'll do. Um, all right, cool. Anything else about this? Cause we've gone way over. Yeah, I, didn't, bit of it. I, I didn't think it was going to stretch, but boy, the, we sort of got off on a couple of trails. We actually covered three different things, right? We talked about architects. We talked about architecture and we talked about how that conference is organized. It was pretty good. All right. Yep. Uh, if you do have any questions or if you are an architect or comments about this episode, you can reach out to us on the Slack team DevOps 20. That's DevOps, the number two and the number zero. Sign up for a free account and join the podcast channel. Uh, in case you have a problem 
and it gives you, sorry, this is down, go crank up an incognito window and it'll work for you. We're still working through the, a 301 redirect is a wonderful thing because it's permanent, but it's also permanent. So if you'd ever visited it before and you got Chrome, that's the reason why it's stuck. Uh, if you want to leave a voicemail for us, you can do that on Voxer. You can set up a free personal account and then you can add DevOps Paradox as a contact and just send us a message that way. If you are listening via Apple podcast, please consider leaving a rating and review. Uh, we've been asking, you know, potentially that you do that for us. We'd appreciate it if you would. Uh, there are links to the Slack workspace, the Voxer account, and how to leave a review with Apple in the description of this episode below. Anything else? That's it. I think next week, if everything goes to plan, and I've never said this before, we're actually going to be talking with people in another sort of guest type episode. Yes. And it's going to be about DevOps, Giga figure. Um, but you may be surprised the people that we have on. Yeah. It, it, it just might surprise you. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe we will have some fights there. That should be fun. No, I know the guys. Oh, you know we the guys? Not. Yeah, I know them. We will not. They're cool. I don't mm. know. I need to find uncool people. But but the but the company they work for is. I'm not going to say they're not cool. The company, not them, but the company. The company is considered not cool by a lot of people. Let's put it that way. Yes. That, that's a safe way to put it. Cause I was trying to come up with a, a pleasant way to say it, but if not for that company, a lot of things wouldn't have happened and we probably wouldn't be where we are today. Yes. Right. Well. That, that, that's a, that's a very, very true statement. So if you're still listening, it's like, who are they talking about? You have to tune into the next episode to find out. Thanks again for listening to episode number 26 of DevOps Paradox.